Hi there, here's Marco from Unreal Design. And today, we are going to check Zeko, our WordPress team for charity and non-profit niche. Before we dive into ins and outs of the Zeko team, if you haven't already, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, if you're watching on YouTube, or to our newsletter, if you're watching on our site. We periodically add team video presentations like this one, as well as tutorials related to our teams and WordPress in general. So, if you don't want to miss out on it, just do it. Alright, let's see what we got here. As you can see, we dedicated the demo for the Zeko team to raising awareness that animals are sentient beings and should be treated as such. We added a couple of hard facts combined with some food for thought to try to make people stop and think for a moment about what they can do to change that sad reality for the better. Design-wise, the team is clean and minimalistic, which is the route we like to take with most of our teams. There are no flashy moving parts to distract the reader from what's the most important on every site, and that is the content. The content has to be the center of attention, and the purpose of design and layout needs to be to support it in that quest. At least, that's what we believe. Flashy visual effects, fade-ins and outs, might be interesting in some cases, but for a team dedicated to charity-type websites, it would simply have no purpose. The front page of this team is built with the header area including logo and the menu at the very top. There are three options for the header that can easily be changed directly from the customizer. So you can choose between always-on header that we have now, then a standard static header where the menu disappears as you scroll down the page. And the centered header, with the logo above the menu. This last option is interesting for anyone that wants to use a bigger logo or even a full width one. Beside these three header options, there are two menu options affecting only the mobile view. The default option makes the menu disappear on mobile when you scroll, and the sticky option leaves the menu visible at all times. Right beneath the header is a hero image with the caption. The image is actually a featured image of the page selected to be the front page. And the caption text is content added to the page editor. There is also an option to have a slider instead of the image caption combination, as we can see in this example. The caption can also be added to the slider using the slider built-in caption feature. The main content area starts with a couple of front page child pages. In the demo, we have two child pages with standard content and a featured image. But you can have as many child pages as you need and they will be displayed below using the same left-right pattern. Below these child pages is the content added using standard pages and customizer panels. There are four panels and they can be set to display all kinds of content. I'll now switch to the customizer view so we can better see what's going on. In the first panel, we have a standard page with editor content and a featured image. One thing to note when preparing the image for this area is that when you use a featured image in the panel, it will actually be displayed in full width. So in this case, one half will be covered by the content. However, each panel offers three layout options, available if you use a featured image, of course. This is an option with featured image on the left and the content on the right. You can easily choose to have featured image on the right and the content on the left. The last option is to have a featured image above the content. In this case, the whole image will be visible. In the second panel, we have three recent posts. To display three recent posts in a panel, you simply need to select your block page from the drop-down menu. Block page is the one you set to display your posts in settings reading in your WordPress dashboard. When displaying recent posts, those three featured image layout options are not available. 
Here we have a layout similar to the first panel that is also built using a standard page and panel option with featured image on the left. The last panel here shows a standard page with give plugin donation forms. These give donation forms are simply added to the editor of the page you selected in the drop down menu of that panel. So, in essence, whatever content you add to the page editor, it will be displayed in the selected panel. That can even be a layout built with a page builder plugin, if you need some additional options. If you don't select a page in the panel drop down, then that panel won't be displayed. This means you can have four panels, or just one or two panels, or even no panel content at all, if you leave all four empty. Below these panels, we have a footer image, which can be added from the customizer and you can even add a caption to it. Here we have a social menu that is easily created from the menu section. You only need to add the URL of the social network and its name in these fields for each of the socials you wish to display. And when the menu is ready, simply assign it to the social menu in menu locations and save. At the bottom, there is a widgetized footer that will display content of any widget you add to the three footer widget areas. If you add a widget to only one footer widget area, then the content will be displayed in one column and spread the full width. With two widget areas used, it will be two column footer. And with all three used, like here, it will be displayed in three columns. Below the footer, you'll find the copyright section, and the content you see there is added directly from the customizer. There is also the scroll to top button that you can also disable if you wish. With this, I would conclude the first out of three presentation videos we prepared for the Zeko team. In the next one, I'll cover block page options and page templates. See you there. Mm -hmm.